Hey everybody, welcome back to the Digital Imaging Channel. I'm Will and today we're going to talk about Aperture Cards. An aperture card is part of the microform family, which includes microfilm and microfiche. And what these are are basically pieces of kind of card stock with a little aperture, a hole where you put some film in, such as the one we're looking at, that will contain something like uh, an engineering drawing or some sort of oversized record. The aperture cards are roughly seven and a half by three and a quarter inches, and I have my ruler here, and I'll just show you very quickly. There's about seven and a half, it's not exact, but close enough. Just about three and a quarter or so. That's the size of it, the dimensions of an aperture card. Next, we're gonna talk about the type of aperture cards. There are various types, so you kinda need to know which one you have just so if you contact somebody like us to scan them, we know what we're gonna be dealing with. So what I have here is the most common, which is the 35 millimeter aperture card because there's a 35 millimeter image in the hole here. This is also what we call at BMI a standard aperture card because there are no holes here, no hole punches. Next, we have what's called a Hollerith aperture card. And why it's called Hollerith is because of these little holes or hole punches that are it's just called Hollerith. Those actually relate to information about this card. So the, the location of the hole punches will actually mean something when we index it or name the file later and it usually relates to the information that's also on the title strip. That is important for scanning because we may be able to use a different type of scanner depending on which way you want to capture the indexing from this card. This is a Hollerith, also 35 millimeter because you have the same type of image there. All right, and a third type of after card, which is not very common at all, is the 16 millimeter after card. So what you see here, is you still have the, the hole, the aperture, but there are actually 16 millimeter images in here. On this one, there are no Hollerith, but there is some information across the title strip, so we would not be able to scan it and try to capture the Hollerith. It's a standard 16 millimeter aperture card. Okay, the next topic is how many aperture cards do you have? This is a very critical piece of information if you're looking to scan these cards because we need to know how many we're going to scan to get an idea of the scope of the project, what the price will be. Usually the more cards you have, the lower the unit price. So, you know, the per card price. Let's say we have an after card collection. Pretend I have maybe 50 boxes of, of cards. The way to get a quick estimate instead of trying to count every single card, which would be extremely time consuming and difficult, is get a ruler. Just go to any of the boxes and just while the cards are sitting there, just kind of stick your ruler up there, grab about an inch. Not perfect, but I grabbed about an inch. You take that inch out, and then you do count how many cards are in this particular inch. We call it the pinch an inch method. You get about an inch or so of cards, pull them out, count exactly how many there are, and let's just pretend there are a, you know, exactly 100 cards in this inch. Then you take that and just extrapolate it. So if you have, let's say, 50 boxes that are 10 inches each, that's 500 inches. And if you have 100 cards per inch, that's 500 times 100, so you have about 50,000 cards. It's a rough estimate, but it's much better than trying to count every single card and figure it out to that detail. So we're just trying to get a ballpark so we have a general idea of where your project is. That's the quickest way, just pinch an inch, measure it, extrapolate that out, and there's your estimate. The next topic we're gonna to talk about is the cost to scan your after cards. A lot of different factors will go into this, so it will depend. But at a high level, you're looking at about 25 cents to 75 cents per card. That's gonna depend on, is it Hollerith? How many do you have? Uh, the condition of the materials? Let's talk about framing and cropping. In our world, that means what happens to the actual film image once it's scanned. I have a whiteboard here because I wanna show you a few examples. It's easier than trying to point it out on the card. Let's start with a 35 millimeter after card. You have your card, and you have the aperture. So the film image is right in there. The framing would be just around that right there. You're getting one image from that frame. So 35 millimeter, easy, you're getting one image. We're gonna do another aperture card, but this time, let's say there are multiple images in that frame, like a 16 millimeter aperture card. So we'll say that's the, the hole, the aperture where the film sits. 
but instead of one 35 millimeter drawing, let's say you have a few, or in this case, four 16 millimeter drawings. In this case, you have options. Option one is you just capture the 35 millimeter frame in its entirety. You'll get a PDF and you'll see those four small images on it. The pros of this are, it's simple. We're just capturing the 35 millimeter frame. We're not going to the individual image. The con of that is each image is not replicated as its own document, basically its own page. The other option you have is to actually capture the individual images by framing them or cropping them out of that 35 millimeter frame. So what that means is we scan it and then we find the individual 16 millimeter images and create the digital file from that. Instead of one big image, we're gonna find four smaller images. So now when we deliver this card, it'll probably be something like a four page PDF file. So instead of one PDF, which is one image, you're gonna have a multi-page PDF file with four images and each of these will be its own page. The pro to this is that you'll be able to see it much easier. It separates the documents as they originally existed. The con of this is it does cost more to frame the individual images. So it really comes down to what you need and what you're, you're expecting once everything's digitized. This next section that we're talking about is indexing. And that is a fun topic because it can be very simple. It can be very complex, but it's also one of the, I'd say top three pieces that will go into the price of your project. So what I have here again is the standard 35 millimeter aperture card. The most common way is to scan the card and capture the information on this title block. So I'm looking at there's something like a drawing number most likely, there's a street address, and then a sheet of sheet. We'll scan this and then capture the information one, two, three, however many of the fields you need. So that's what we can do for the standard aperture card. That's the simplest way. Another way for this type of card is to go to the actual image. So we could scan the card, capture the, the film image, and then find information on this image and name it by that. That can get a little more complex because you can imagine that these images change across, let's say a 50,000 card uh, project. They're not all gonna be the same. Whereas the aperture card itself, the cardstock, these fields will be pretty consistent. The second method, we're taking our Hollerith card here. We can still do the standard way, but because it's Hollerith, we can actually use a specific scanner to scan this card and it reads the Hollerith information, which is great because it's usually lower cost for you because we don't have to actually go in and key this title block, but we don't guarantee that the Hollerith will work. We've done projects with many aperture cards and occasionally a card will come back, it just won't read the Hollerith and you'll also have a blank named image. It just won't capture it or maybe it's not very good information. It's just something could be wrong with it. But if that happens, what we usually do is flag that as an exception and then we go to the image anyway. You have a couple different options with the Hollerith card, title block, Hollerith, or from the image itself. Now lastly, it's not necessarily a different way of indexing, but if you have a 16 millimeter aperture card and you wanna capture the information from the individual images, that's gonna be a little more complex because what you can tell is on this card, there are 12 individual images. So if you go with the standard method of using the title block, that's just one index point. But if you then decide, you know what, I wanna capture each image and whatever type of information is on there, maybe there's a number or a name or something, that's 12 individual index points on one card. Something else with aperture cards that may be applicable, you can see there's a little uh, red mark. So that's just a pen mark this off back in the day. And why I'm showing this is because pretty often on aperture cards we'll see some sort of writing, you know, handwriting or typing or something like that, that's maybe not in the the title block field, but it might be important to your organization to capture. Lastly, we have your digital output. So you scan your cards, you have a digital format, but we have to deliver them to you. There are a couple different ways of doing that. The two main ones that we talk about at BMI are the traditional method and then our digital reel method. So traditional method is, let's say you want PDFs, we scan these, we create your PDF files, and we name them however you want them named, whichever method you decide to uh, organize these. We deliver them to you as PDFs, maybe on a hard drive or through an FTP electronic method or some other 
way of getting them to you. That's what we call traditional because that's what most people think about when they hear about digital conversion. The other way is what we call our digital real method because that's an application we created where we can host your records in, in the cloud. The difference is that we scan the cards and we present them as they exist here. So you open the file, it looks exactly like this, and then you can select the image and look at that. You can adjust the, the, the brightness and contrast. You can do global searching, things of that sort, and still create PDFs, TIFFs, JPEGs from that application. It comes down to what you want. Maybe you have a document management system that you say, eh, just give me my TIFFs, I'm gonna load them up there, or maybe you wanna go into a new management system and you ask us to put digital real. Those are the two main ways that we can deliver these files to you. So that covers it for today. We talked about the different kinds of Aperture cards, 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter, Hollerith, standard, how to index it. Pretty much everything you need to know at a basic level to kind of understand a project to scan Aperture cards. So you have these, just gives you a little more information so you're prepared to talk to someone about moving forward with a conversion project. We hope you enjoyed today. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to get new videos and we hope to see you next time.